Awesome. Thank you. Okay, hello. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, so today we are going to be um, doing something a bit different. In a lot of talks, um, we've, I've found personally that people tend to kind of go over how to build um, a, a component with a given framework. Um, the aim with this talk is um, not to do that. We're not going to be looking at any kind of code here. But what we're going to do is we're going to compare how the frameworks are built up and um, the merits of using different frameworks for different scenarios. So, um, first of all, I'll just say um, who I am. So, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is George Wilson. Um, I have been developing Extension Streamer for about six years now, contributing to the docs for the last five, the core for the last four years, and for the last year and a bit, I have been a PLT member. Um, I am in charge of um, releasing Joomla and various other things. Uh, yeah. So, and for, uh, to pre anticipate your questions, I have no clue when it's coming out. <laughs> Okay, um, just um, at my job, um, we build a, um, is a, a security firm uh, doing biometric authentication. Um, so we do facial recognition and um, it's really enjoyable. So yeah. <laughs> uh, next hour. So as I said, we're gonna be uh, looking at some different MVC frameworks, um, legacy MVC, FOF2, FOF3, uh, the new MVC from Juma, and kind of at the very end, we'll very briefly touch on, sorry, uh, some situational kind of use cases for these things. Okay, so um, first of all, what actually is a good MVC? What are we looking for when we are building a component? And um, Obviously, first of all, hopefully you know what your code's doing, because it makes it far easier to debug when you can actually understand what the hell it is. <coughs> so, um, let's just formally make some kind of rough definitions of what we expect. We have, in our MVC, obviously we have our controllers, our models, and our views. Our controller is the part that um, is going to get the user data, sanitize it, and then call the model and the view where relevant, or perform some sort of redirect. Our model is going to be the thing that actually <coughs> is doing the action, maybe largely. So that whether that's making HTTP requests, uh, whether that's um, doing database queries, um, anything like that, it's kind of doing the action. And then your view is uh, responsible for the making some sort of representation of that data. So it doesn't matter what the format is, whether it's HTML, whether it's some sort of web service outputting Jensen or uh, XML, doesn't matter. So um, next thing is to, I think, with those in mind to kind of dive in, um, the first thing we're going to start looking at is legacy MVC. So, um, Legacy MVC is the most widely used MVC framework in Joomla. Um, it's what all the core extensions are written in, with the exception of um, comconfig, which uses new MVC. Um, obviously, for that, it's shipped in core Joomla. Uh, it's been around since, well, the base classes were around in 1.5, and there was a lot of extra stuff added in 2.5, and since then it has been largely unchanged, which means it's very stable, well tested, etc. So, um, what makes up um, it? So, you have um, the controller. So, the controller in Legacy MVC, um, you have a base controller class, which is JController Legacy. And out of that, there are various um, sub, con uh, sub various controllers that extend the base controller for specialist use cases, so for forms, for lists, um, all of which can are uh, very widely used in kind of classic applications um, with your kind of list single your list and single item views, um, articles, web links, contacts, etc. 
Um, but you can always fall back to the base class um, if you're doing something a bit more original or specific. Or um, One of the interesting things about Legacy MVC is that it requires a different controller for uh, different view outputs. So if you're building um, AJAX requests or something like that into your component, you will need to build a special controller to pick up your, um, your AJAX request um, based on the format. So if you are looking to um, output a uh, JSON format, then it will look for um, <coughs> um, your controller name .json.php instead of just written what you'd have over the HTML view of your controller name .php. Um, that can trip a lot of people up and Um, cool. So, um, moving on, the model. So, the model, again, has a base class with various um, model classes extending out of it for the kind of everyday use cases with lists and single items. Um, it's a stateful model, which means that um, it builds up this internal state of all the data that's coming out of your session and your inputs. Um, generally, this method is overridden uh, by like ninety percent of use cases um, to pick up the various pieces of extra data you need from the session and your model. Um, and also, the model is kind of from our classical case where the model is doing actions. The model is split up in between this model class and the table class. The, the table class is a wrapper around a single table that's designed to perform the common requests like load and save. Um, you will find in some components that they completely remove the use of the table class if they're starting to go uh, completely um, crazy with relationships between tables because it really is built for kind of single table applications, not for all the complicated joins and stuff you need. And even in Corejima for stuff like categories, you'll find that you'll build queries up in the model rather than table classes just to join, which is kind of a pain. Um, so yeah, so as I said, then there's this table class, which is from our classical MVC perspective, almost like a second part of the model. Um, those of you who have done gone beyond Joomla and use things like ORMs will recognize JTable as a really, really awful early day predecessor of an OR of kind of an ORM where you something like Doctrine where you will wrap a table and do set and get your data completely through um, a class that wraps your table. Um, finally there is the view. Um, you have a view class um, which is pretty much used by everything. There are some extensions that are used to make using common categories easier, but generally you're always just going to be extending the legacy view class. Um, <coughs> it isn't straightforward to do non-HTML views, although it is completely possible in it. Generally, um, if there's a good example of um, a VCF output format in common contact if you want to have a look. But generally, if you're doing something um, like AJAX request where you're looking to get JSON output back, people generally tend to just uh, skip a view altogether and just um, echo out the output directly in the controller um, because they need to stop plugin events running because a lot of plugins in Joomla um, do not deal with uh, <coughs> HTML output very well. Uh, they always assume you're on HTML format and then destroy whatever the format of data you are by inserting HTML into the middle of it. Um, and anybody here who's built mass, uh, mass distributed extensions knows the pain of that, I'm sure. Um, okay, so that's kind of legacy MVC in a nutshell from a kind of developer perspective. So we will move on to um, framework on framework, which is um, something built by Nick there uh, for his extensions and made open source several years back now. Um, you can get this from Akiba's website, GitHub. Um, version 2 is being shipped in Joomla Core since 3.2, and um, 
versions 3.05 and higher as of about last week has been available through Composer. So if you want to, if you're starting to use Composer to build up custom third party libraries, that's also a useful option to have available. Um, so, um, what does, so I'm going to kind of talk about FOF, the generic commonalities between <coughs> FOF 2 and 3, because obviously with one being shipped in core and the other being the latest and greatest, both are viable options. So I'll go through the stuff we have in, they have in common, and then we'll look at kind of specifics for FOF 2 and FOF 3. Nick's perked his head up in the corner there from his phone. Don't use it, don't use it! Cool. <laughs> um, okay, so FOF uses this system of configuration mm. over convention. That means, which is kind of borrowed from Ruby. Um, and that basically means that... Convention over convention. Damn it! Always get it the wrong way around. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I can fix <coughs> this. Have to recompile your slides. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> it's the ultimate update. It's fine. I've got a grunt compiler. Um, okay. So uh, things have a default, but uh, always overridable. Um, there are mainly, uh, this is done in an XML file called fof.xml on your root, um, but obviously there are other places as well where things can be overridden in for various other more specific things. Um, so a good example of this kind of thing is table names. Um, in JTable, for those of you who have used it, you'll be aware that you always have to have this JTable file with like three lines in which specifies your table name and its primary key, which can get awfully annoying and frustrating when you have tons of database tables in your component. Um, FOF goes on the principle of um, if you have a uh, table name, we will assume it's in the format of controller, uh, sorry, of component name uh, underscore view name, and that makes it means that you don't have to write um, this code, which is really useful and time saving. But of course, it's overridable, which means if you want to do legacy support, you can. Uh, Cool. Um, okay, the other thing that it has which is really useful is XML based views. This means that so much of the time when you're building back end interfaces, you have to spend time building code to make it look pretty. And generally, um, a lot of these views are the same they're list views, they're field views none of which need to be, you know, the, you're repeating this code again and again over the course of your component. FOF takes out some of the kind of difficulties in that by uh, allowing you to just specify fields in an XML file and then it will render them for you completely uh, fully HTML, bootstrapped. Um, it's not compulsory. If you want to do something custom, you can in PHP, but it's there as a fallback. Um, it is available in the front end, but generally I wouldn't recommend it because um, template overrides start to become a pain in the ass, basically, because people like, when they're making template overrides, like to be able to just copy a file, paste it into their uh, template, and then make edits, or in <coughs> some cases, just edit it directly without making a template override. Um, but when you have this kind of renderer doing it for you, there's no single point of truth to copy from, which means that um, some people can find it confusing. If it's just a custom component that you're only going to be ever maintaining, it can be usable, but as a general rule, you're probably going to want to do template-specific stuff, in which case PHP files are advantageous for the front end. Um, next slide. Um, okay, so FOF2 confusingly has two different names, FOF and F0F. 
Thanks to Nick. Thanks to Bob. Um, these are basically the same libraries, um, to all intents and purposes. Um, one version, FOF is the ver uh, version we have in core, F0F is the version that Nick shipped because core didn't release as frequently as Nick needed to maintain his extensions. Um, also, core said that they wanted to remove FOF, but they didn't. Yeah, well, I can't help my predecessor's choices. Um, anyway, so there's basically two versions of FOF2 out there uh, with these two different namespaces. And so if you ever see them around, don't worry, they're not doing different things. They just have different class names because it allowed one to evolve at a faster pace than the other. Um, both of them are now at the same point, for what it's worth. Um, when FOF3 came out, both F0F and FOF were at exactly the same um, commitments. Um, it's... Um, in some ways similar to Juma's MVC layer. It did initially start as a fork of it and adapted and evolved and kind of went its own way, but it is still recognizable as Juma's legacy MVC layer in some ways. Um, so you still have your, um, your tables, your models, your views, your controllers, um, but obviously with all these kind of defaulted values that Juma doesn't offer. Um, one of the nice things that it does do over the legacy MVC is it offers this um, ability to call it from anywhere with a dispatcher, which Juma doesn't give you. In Juma, you either have to kind of require in the controller and run the controller or um, do awful evil kinds of voodoo um, in order to kind of get, <coughs> say, an article to display in a contact, for example which is why things like no numbers component, uh, articles anywhere and that kind of thing are so prevalent because there's just no way to do that when kind of a couple of lines of PHP or something. Obviously there still, would still be use cases for inside articles and stuff but it would be a much lower use case. Um, one of the problems with FOF2 though is, is that it was hard but not impossible to kind of extend it beyond kind of simplish list and item views. It was really, really good at kind of doing what Juma does, which is things like articles and things like that. Um, but if you wanted to kind of build your own stuff, which is a bit more out of the box, that doesn't necessarily have kind of straight one-to-one -one mappings of lists and items, then it started overriding it almost became as painful as just coding it yourself in legacy MVC. Um, so that was kind of where the inspiration for FOF3 comes from. Um, okay, so FOF3 was a major refactor on FOF2. It namespaced all the classes, uh, it moved in a container instead of a conf, uh, this massive magic array of configuration variables that got passed around and made it easier to access things. And most importantly, as I mentioned, it made it so much more extensible. Um, it is in no way like Joomla's MVC layer anymore. Um, if you wanted to find something that it's close to, um, a lot of it is based on Laravel. And in some cases where Nick's documentation has been lacking, I have actually used the Laravel docs because they have exactly the same code and documentation in. Um, okay. So FF3 has, um, like I kind of talked about earlier for FF2, a dispatcher. The dispatcher has two jobs. First of all, it does, um, if you're doing some kind of web service-y thing where you might not be logged in, it can do some transparent, it can do transparent authentication. It'll look for your username and your password and your authentication header and do basic authentication for you if you need it. Uh, secondly, it is responsible for executing the controller. It's kind of like what Juma has in its kind of global controller .php file that you have at the root of your component. Um, except it actually does that job a lot better because it isn't really a controller, if you think about it. So and then you have the actual controller. So in FOF2, this was all one file, which made a pain overriding things. Now there is a base controller and a data controller. 
the data controller is similar to what uh, <coughs> the final product was in FOF2 um, ish. Um, but um, you have the base controller when you want to do much more custom stuff, which is similar in scope to what JController Legacy is. Um, there are huge amounts of plugin events thrown. The important thing about FOF3 is the ability to trigger hooks and plugins to um, override things. So you can, um, if an event gets thrown in a controller, the first thing it'll do is it'll check for a method of that name inside the uh, model, so inside the controller, and then it will throw a generic plugin event so that anything else can go in. And this makes such a difference when you're looking to build integrations with other software. Such a difference. Because if I now want to build, okay, so uh, a theoretical example here. Um, I'm building um, a system where I need um, admin access, um, a country by country admin access. Now, I want to build a plugin that hooks into com users that allows you to select a country for a user. And then I want to apply that in um, a model, say. Now, with Juma, that would be a living nightmare because whilst you can show the form field nicely in com users, no problem, uh, there's already plugin events for that. There is no way to kind of, in any way, kind of manipulate the query that you're doing in other components to, um, to, 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 to add in that kind of filter for the admin's country status. There's just no way of doing it. You, we don't get the query object anywhere. There's no <coughs> plugin events being thrown pretty much anywhere in Joomla's models. And so it becomes stupidly powerful. Um, the problem is, is that it can also be used for evil. There, if you allow people to hook in on your data things, then all it takes is one component doing dodgy stuff and things can go very wrong very quickly. Um, because they can start hooking in and manipulating your queries in ways that you don't expect or don't like or don't want and horrible, horrible stuff can happen. Name and shame. Yeah, pretty much. Um, you can name and shame, yes, um, but I will not in this talk. Sorry, I'm just going to grab water, don't worry. Um, so, that, so FF's models um, Again, as I say, widely used hooks and uh, plugin events to make them extensible. Um, this ability to kind of edit your queries with hooks is just makes thing makes such a difference. It's also available in FOF2, but um, it wasn't as easy to kind of use. Um, adding in custom functions is easy. Um, the big difference between FOF3 models and FOF2 models is that in FOF2 you still had this Joomla convention of having models and tables <coughs> that were kind of doing the same thing, but in different places and you had to spend time tracking down whenever you were debugging where your database query was actually being executed from before you could even start working out what was wrong with it. FOF has fixed that by removing this concept of tables. Everything is now done in the model. The model is almost ORM-like. It uh, wraps, you declare, it wraps a table, a table basically, and then you can declare relations between datas. So if I had a categories um, model, I could say it has many articles. And then when I load a category, I can then access all the articles that are associated with that category. And those relationships are set up either in your XML file or with one line in the constructor of the model. And that, if you start to build components with data that depends on each other, makes things so ridiculously powerful. Um, you can just build up data like that. And if any of you guys have ever, again, I use Doctrine or something like that, it's a similar kind of principle, although slightly, slightly watered down from what Doctrine is. Uh, okay, finally the views. Um, again, there's this base view and data view concept. 
Um, there is also the option of um, using Blade as a template renderer. Who in here has used template renderers just to get a feel? So kind of twig, mustache. Okay, a few of you, okay. So template renderers is becoming quite a big thing at the moment um, to try and make things easier for people to access, uh, easier for people to inject data and to make um, templates more reusable outside of the kind of the CMS environment when you're building custom applications and stuff. Um, but they still have use cases inside the CMS as well. Um, and there's a lot of arguments in there about whether we should be kind of trying to use a template render in future versions of Joomla um, as an alternative to the traditional PHP um, But yeah, so Blade's here. Um, one of the small downsides of Blade, though, is, is that it can make it more confusing if you use it for clients because of the way FOF works. It um, searches for the Blade views first, then falls back to looking for PHP views, which means that if your component uses Blade, your template override must use Blade. You can't do a PHP template override of a Blade view. Because that's your Blade PHP extension. If you're PHP view, of course. Anyway. So, <laughs> the new MVC. Okay, so my next slide tells you pretty much all there is. It's a blank book. New MVC, there is by design nothing there. It's there for you to do your own stuff, but with some minorish constraints. Um, so it allows you to st uh, it allows people to kind of recognize what's going on, but without you without enforcing anything. So um, basically, all it says is you have stateful models, single task controllers, and it simplifies the way that views are dealt with a bit from what we have in Legacy MVC. That's it. Controllers and models are pretty much a blank book. You have to write a lot of code yourself, but the caveat, but the advantages are in that you can kind of you can build it your own way. There's no constraints on you whatsoever because there's no code there to constrain you. Um, so yes. So the original rationale was that we would then go and build things based on UMVC, but it became so kind of fighty and nothing ever really got done. We got as far as, um, so we built rebuilt comconfig onto the new MVC, and there's a whole bunch of classes in there that were deliberately made abstract enough that they could go into kind of be core libraries. Um, for things like forms and lists and that kind of thing, again. Um, then I got, I did a GSOC project a year and a half ago that was supposed to work on that and build it up, but it never got beyond, I mean the GSOC, I finished the code for the GSOC project, but it never went anywhere, no one ever was interested in it, so it's just it's still sitting in there as a pull request. Um, Com configs MVC had a lot of flaws, so a lot of it I ended up rewriting anyway, and the stuff I didn't rewrite I wish I had. Um, I don't understand the point. That's the point was, okay... We're all very good at PHP, so we can <coughs> go off and do what we want. Pretty much. I mean, don't forget, at the end of the day, a component... What a component is, is just an entry file. You have one file, and then you can do whatever you want in that file. If you think of something like com ajax, that really does just use the single entry file, does a few things, and returns in that file. It doesn't need a full MVC layer. So if you, you know, there are compo a lot of the bigger mass distributed extensions out there. You know, I mean, okay, Akiba FFs is kind of a special case, but even um, things like, um, I don't know, SH404 or um, K2, or all those kinds of things, use their actually not K2, but um, a lot of the big mass distributed extensions do use their own frameworks. Um, they don't even bother trying to use Joomla's because 
at a point where you get big enough, you want to have something that's completely custom to your needs. Kind of working around Joomla issues and even um, not necessarily working around Joomla issues, like as in like bugs, but as in working around kind of Joomla has a the MVC has a set way of doing things, and if you want to do things outside of those ways. It, you may as well write your own thing than work around it. Yes, in my experience, anytime you have a framework, you reach, you reach the edge of the framework. Mm -hmm. You need to go beyond. Correct. So, there was several reasons for new MVC coming up. First of all, is, is there was this kind of absolutely blank starting point. You know, um, you really there was no pretty much no requirements on it whatsoever but then the idea was was then you build up out of it and build up layers on it so that people can hook off it hook up to the next layer and put in their own stuff whenever they wanted right up to the kind of highest level the problem was twofold first of all was Oh, and the other, oh, sorry, I should finish where I was going with this. So the other issue was that um, we wanted something to put in the kind of, well, at the time it was platform, now is framework, um, that was sufficiently high level that the CMS could do its own thing and the framework had these really high level classes. The caveat was the <coughs> single task controller thing. Single task controller basically means you, uh, in legacy MVC, you have all these different functions corresponding to tasks. You know, one function per task. Single controllers mean that you have one task per file. And you just have a lot of files. Makes it reusable, has a lot of advantages when you're building things like web services. Like, it's really powerful. Like, I've built several applications with the framework on new MVC that build web services, and it's <coughs> great for that. But if you're building a big shopping cart system where you have one task per file, suddenly the amount of files you have can get rapidly out of control. And there are workarounds and stuff for it, but it just, the arguments got so great that it basically nothing ever got done with it. And so it's just sitting there not doing a huge amount. But if you want to build your own thing with it, there's no reason why you can't. It's not going anywhere uh, for the foreseeable future. And um, for, I mean, unless you are building some stupidly big shopping cart system or something like that, it probably is just fine to go and build your own thing with it. If you're unhappy with the way that the GM legacy system works. So the legacy stuff's still going to be there, though? When for now. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question. I could do a whole talk about that. I mean, I suppose just going to get someone like Cody Knight or something. You just, you just need one of the great things about Junior is you've got the whole CMS bolt in. It seems to it seems totally abstract in the CMS. Or it can just come on the framework. Yeah. I, I, I've missed some, maybe I've missed some. New MVC oh. and the MVC we ship with the framework is exactly the same thing at the moment. So, um,. Yeah, I mean, the whole point of components is you can do whatever you want, as I said. Um, new MVC is just an option that provides some standardization so that, I mean, if you did go and build, I don't know, um, some theoretical world, you imported um, Lav the entire Laravel stack in to build a component, it probably will work. But when the next developer comes in, or even if so you know you had just a Juma specialist working with you they're going to have absolutely no clue what's going on so the advantage the kind of advantage of new mvc is is that you can um someone coming in shouldn't be totally unfamiliar with the concepts of it i'll just read the documentation i'm sort of confused but, yeah, confused slightly, but, yeah. there isn't yeah well, I'm sure the components that currently work they need to be a ref uh, old MVC has a lot of problems. At some point, they will be. Yeah. And when is that? <sighs> <laughs> Probably. 
gym for maybe maybe later yeah I mean so there's a lot of problems so one of the biggest problems with legacy MVC is that all of its stuff kind of wraps this class called J object and J object was built for this time of PHP 4 where there were no such things as private and public properties there were just very vari class variables and there was also um, no such thing as exceptions so it had its own built-in error system all of those things now exist natively in PHP and so e anyway just to kind of help developers in who may not be new to do <coughs> they should be looking to use those things that natively exist in the language rather than trying to rebuild so by the time you've refactored all of legacy MVC to do that it's almost worth starting blank book and because they're just so baked in it's so hard to just click your fingers and make them go away um, especially the error handling the documentation for new MVC is almost non-existent because as I say blank book <laughs> yeah, we're getting there slowly, slowly, very slowly. Uh, okay, so um, which is best? And the answer is any or all of them. There is no such thing as the right framework for all use cases. You know, I've had people go up to me time and time again and say. Um, what's the best MVC framework to build my component with? And to which the follow-up answer is always, what is your component doing? There is no right or wrong answer. Well, there can be a wrong answer, but there isn't necessarily a right answer. <laughs> um, it's using the right framework in the right situation, and also about thinking ahead, because what might be the right framework today if you know that your client's going to come back to you with new specs and it massively expanding on this component at the same time next year, then you've got to kind of build the component with, the, with what you think they might be coming back to you with in mind, even if you're not coding it or anything. You don't, I mean, you don't want to make things like stupidly hard for yourself, but you want to have flexibility there for if they come back to you in the future, especially if you can see glaring holes. Um, so just kind of taking a few examples. Um, for example, if I had a small component showing, I don't know, events or something like that, with a simple backend interface, um, I'd probably use FOF, doesn't matter, two or three, uh, depends really. As I said, FOF2 is simple and baked into core, so that's nice. Because um, you can just create a database table, create some XML views in the backend, don't need any controllers because convention. Uh, don't need any models and <coughs> just got some front end PHP views. Really quick, really simple, next to no work to be done. Um, conversely, if I had this massive custom component with complex database relations, which I actually did have to do recently, then FOF3 with relationships was a complete lifesaver because being able to specify all the relations between these tables in the PHP rather than have to manually remember them and build my join queries and build horribly custom SQL queries. Yes? <coughs> Quick one about the RM thing. Yes. Are you reproducing the relationships um, in, in the uh, object layer uh, to, re to represent the relationships in the database? Yes. So you're sort of redoing it? Well, when you build foreign keys in a database, all you're doing is specifying, all you're doing is basically sanity checking, right? Mm -hmm. You can't store wrong values in, but when you um, say I have categories with articles in, even if I specify a foreign key in the database, that stops me inserting categories, or articles that don't exist into categories and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But if I take a category out of the database, that's not going to stop me from um, there's no way of automatically loading all the articles associated with that category. Mm. And that's what FOF3 can do. I can, well, it lazy loads it, so it's not a massive performance drain at all. It's not like it's loading all these relationships at once, but they are there <coughs> and easy to access, which is 
really, really useful. Um, is that question yeah, answered? Um, okay, so if I was building a mass distributed component though, um, I would still personally stick with legacy MVC. Uh, it's the most widely understood by users and more importantly, developers creating integrations. Um, it's hugely well tested on core components and it's slightly less opinionated so you can do more with it. Um, getting death stares. <laughs> but no, well, that well tested. <laughs> anyway. Um, but you know, if you're building a mass distributed stupidly custom component, then you might want to think about building your MVC. And that was where I was getting through with you is if you start to become massively constrained by legacy MVC, um, new MVC might be the solution to that. You can just build it yourself. Um, people coming in should get a rough, should have a rough idea of what it does, because you know it's been in Joomla for a while, but it's not going to be groundbreakingly new to them. And it also allows you to keep the kind of standardized PHP templates that you're used to without any problems whatsoever, which is very important for people who like template overrides or just <coughs> hack the hell out of your views and then moan when you do it, they do an extension update and they will vanish. So, congratulations, you made it through. Nobody managed to fall asleep by the looks of it, so well done. Um, thank you for listening, and are there any questions? Yes. Actually, it's, it's not very related to what you presented with frameworks. Uh -huh. uh, do you know if there are any plans to include the CLI or some kind of scaffolding some, some things? So, because as you said, eventually we're going to, to refactor our existing components yeah. sooner or later. And if we have a scaffolding mechanism, it would be nice to, to just focus on the business uh, model and do so more easy our job. I think CLI, okay, so another one of the things that single task controllers allows you to do is CLI, um, but it generally requires some sort of dispatcher because in your controller you're generally getting data out of the input, but then when you're doing CLI, of course, it's a completely different sort of input. Now JInput has a handler to deal with CLI input, but then you have to be accessing that data. So I think CLI will come and probably whenever we refactor the MVC system, but it's not going to be just as simple as you build one thing for web views and you can then just pretty much copy and paste that, but eradicating the view part of CLI, you're still going to be having to do extra work to handle CLI inside your component because the data is coming from a different place and you've got to deal with that. Is that? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I revert to previous slide and stick to silence is the best defense. Anybody else? Yes. What about FIF1? FIF1. Um, 2011. Uh, if you see a version of FOF1 in the world, be very concerned about the security of that site because it probably means they haven't been doing any updates for a very, very long time. Okay, if that's everything, we're good time, yeah. A few minutes to go till the next talk starts. So, um, oh no, lunch even. Excellent. <laughs>